Hey YouTube, Elvis Ammo here. Hey, uh, today we're going to talk about uh, lead hardness testing. Okay, um, and not only are we going to test some lead hardness, um, we're going to look briefly at you know what uh, what to do with the information that you get from testing the lead. Okay. So, um, and, and maybe a little bit about, you know, how to apply it. Um, this seems to be a, a subject, you know, that, uh, that is pretty confusing. And I must admit, it, it is to me as well. Um, it, it can, um, sometimes uh, knowing what I know, I still forget and leave out the facts that I know. And, uh, and it messes me up every time. Um, so... Um, I'm going to tell you um, today about how I test my lead and, uh, and what I do with the information that I get. Um, now, uh, I, have, uh, I have here a, uh, a Lee uh, lead hardness testing kit, okay? And uh, this is going to be less about a review on the Lee lead hardness testing kit and more about testing your lead and what to do with the information that you receive. Or, um, it, it will also leave you with a decision to make on whether or not uh, you should test your lead at all. Um, uh, you know, based on what you're already doing, um, you know, whether it can, whether it will improve your loading uh, capabilities or not. So you'll be the judge in the end of this because really in this video I'm not pushing a product at all um, nor do I ever <laughs> by the way I, you know unless there's something I really love and I'll tell you I really love it and it really works good um, now this one on the other hand um, I'm gonna say you know in the beginning that I find it useful um, I find it very useful there's some good information that I get from using this now in the past we have all tested our lead um, or not some of us have not tested it at, at all because the way most people uh, or uh, lots of people throughout history has done it um, whether they tested their lead or not one thing they, they always did was work up a load until they find something that is that is uh, grouping you know accurately and um, and is functioning well in their in their rifle and they're satisfied with the results. Um, so along with any any uh, of the information that I give today that you know sounds confusing, um, don't uh, don't take take it with a grain of salt because the only thing I'm offering you today is is really, the information that you get by testing your lead, what you do with that information, um, and uh, and in the end, um, you'll you'll under you'll you'll see that it's it's so helpful to know this information, um, but in the end, it's not necessary because we work our loads up until we're satisfied. But um, but I must admit that the information will will uh, make it make the process a little easier I, I'll say that um, so let's uh, let's first of all I'll just go ahead and just talk about this this uh, Lee uh, lead hardness testing kit okay um, it's you know the size of a die has a bearing or BB on the bottom it has a chamber at the top and a spring inside the die and when you screw it into your die your uh, your press and then you uh, you know Lee says to take your bullet and file a flat spot on it well I do it a little bit different um, you know I like uh, I found that by just just slight just shaving the, the top of the bullet off into into a flat spot does 
two things for me that filing does not and uh, and that is it it offers me a, a, a nice shiny <laughs> I can't ever hold this bullet still <laughs> let's see here we go if I can do it it offers me a nice shiny flat spot on the bullet and um, a flat spot so that that little tiny divot that I make with this with this press will uh, will be more light reflective um, so there we go I flattened out a spot with my knife and I'm gonna set it right on the press now you try to set it as level as possible Lee tells you in their little manual instruction manual to pull the to pull the arm down uh, line it up on your on your flat spot and and let's see let's line it up on the flat spot here we go and then you pull the press handle down until the rod is even with this chamber hole and then you hold it for 30 seconds so here we go pull uh, well crap <laughs> I just uh, I already messed up I didn't have my my die down far enough yep that's what I get <clears throat> There we go. Only on YouTube, right? Put it down there. Let's see. Hopefully I'll still be able to use this. I think so. Alright. So, let's return. We're going to push the handle down. The, the, the uh, rod is going to go flat with this chamber hole. And then I'm going to hold it for 30 seconds. There we go. There it is, right there. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. And I know I counted fast, so I'll hold it here for a couple more seconds. And release. And then what Lee says to do is to measure the little divot that you make with that I think 52 pounds of pressure or so alright so let's see if you can see the little divot just a little tiny divot right there little tiny divot all right so then I put it in the vice grips here because um, it's a lot easier to hold it still while I measure it and this is what you measure it with this is a 20 power microscope okay some of you have already seen this before um, but stay tuned because um, this isn't just about this uh, about this Lee hardness tester. It's about what to do with the information, how you can translate that into making a more efficient bullet. So here we go. I'm going to measure this. When you look inside of here, it looks like this. Okay, this is the picture that you get right here. You have this scale in here to measure with. And there's a picture of your little tiny divot, and um, and then uh, you translate the number that you get to measure with the data that is given to you right here, and then it'll give you your Brunel hardness. So let's measure that. All right, it looks like a beautiful round crater, silver. All right, I got uh, 0.046. All right, so I go to my chart right here. It says point 
046 and that is a Brunel hardness of 24.8 all right so my bullet that I've been shooting is 24.8 on the Brunel hardness scale all right that's pretty decent all right so here we go um, now what we want to know here is uh, the, no the next number that that we need to use um, is now I'm not sure if I would have known that doing my fingernail by the way but um, the number that that we're looking for here is next is right here it says beyond to the Brunel hardness scale go to the fourth column and it has pounds per square inch 31,713 pounds per square inch. That's how much pressure this bullet can with, can withstand, all right? So, um, one thing that we know from the experts is the best way to load this bullet that we just tested is to, you want to bring it to its maximum compression strength okay so in other words you want to put enough power behind it not feet per second not feet per second um, but pressure you want to put enough pressure behind it to slightly deform it but not permanently alter it so that when it comes out of the barrel the deformity is just from the pressure blowing it out of the barrel and then as soon as it leaves the barrel it returns to its original shape um, and that is your that is the compression strength of the bullet okay from the experts alright so now we have a number that we can use to try to determine how we're gonna load this thing but just like always we work up loads alright because we don't know that this is dead on accurate. That's the problem. So what we do now is we look in our data book. Let's look at one. All right. So now let's let's try to determine, you know, what we're going to do with that number. All right. Here we go. We got the Lyman 49th edition. If you don't have one of these books, get you one. I'll I'll sell this one all day long excellent excellent data so here we go we're going to look in here and we find uh i'm just going to go with a 55 grain bullet uh and we look in here and uh now this isn't data for this load okay uh, i'm not giving you data for the load i'm not scared to death to give you data for the load because i trust that you won't go over the maximum pressures in the books to begin with but that's not what I'm doing here today I'm really this is an example of how to use the information that you got um, because your bullets gonna be completely different so here we go alright if you were to use feet per second and say oh I'm gonna keep it at 2400 feet per second I know that that's gonna be just right okay I mean a lot of people say that so here we go, we've got a 223 round, I'm in the 55 grain bullet section here, and I just want you to see the difference between the pressures of different powders. Here we go, Accurate Arms 2015, it's showing, uh, uh, nope, hold on a second, uh, Benchmark is showing the least amount of pressure for... 2,793 feet per second in the minimum in 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 the uh, in the starting load, and the most pressure that I see in this column is 36,700 at 2,853 feet per second. All right, now. That's a hundred feet per second in difference, which is nothing. If you think a hundred feet per second is big deal, <clears throat> all right. So I don't think so. So here we go. 
30 uh, now let's look at this let's look at this pressure the difference in pressure for a hundred feet per second is thirty three thousand one hundred and thirty six thousand seven hundred we're talking almost four thousand feet uh, four thousand pounds per square inch that's a pretty big deal by the way it really is um, even in for low data even for a, 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 a a pistol round, rifle round, 4,000, that's a lot of pressure. 4,000 pounds per square inch. Well, the only thing that you get for the difference is 100 feet per second more. Nothing, nothing. As a matter of fact, you may not even find that it's 100 feet per second. That's just what the data is showing under controlled conditions. Okay? So, my whole point is feet per second don't matter. The amount of pressure matters because that is what we're showing here. My bullet can withstand 31,713. The lowest on the minimum load data here is 33.1. So I need to bring that down just a little bit, okay? No problem, I can bring it down, but what it's going to do is it's going to probably give me a better starting position to create this load, all right? Um, and then there's other factors involved. So, um, just because you have a lead hardness tester, just because you understand what the compression strength of your bullet is, there's other factors that you have to understand that play a big role in destroying your bullet um, and one of those factors is um, is obviously you know you have a lead bullet is it lubed is it powder coated does it have a gas check or did you put a jacket on it do you have a jacketed bullet see there's differences there in the bullet um, the other factor is the burn rate of the powder the burn rate of the powder um, now, now, uh, right now, I'm, 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 I'm probably trading on guesstimation, and I shouldn't. Um, but uh, I'll show you the burn rate, and um, you know why is it that the, you know, I mean that's obviously why, you know, your your um, your pistol powders are very fast burning. Your rifle powders are usually very slow burning compared. Um, when I say slow burning, I mean, you know, when you pull the trigger, bang, right? And we're talking splits of a second here. But it's a huge uh, amount of time uh, for, for your, your bullet, okay? So here's a bur powder burning rate chart, okay? Um, they all don't look the same, but this is going to give you a good idea. Uh, your, your pistol powder is that's the fastest burning to the slowest burning. All right. Well, what we've seen in our data book, you know, um, in 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 many cases, you know, is evidence of the burn rate. You know, the the amount of time that the bullet is exposed to that amount of pressure. Okay. So this is where. This is where the information that you're getting here um, is helpful. Okay, so if I have, um, so if I'm using, uh, you know, I mean, I load some with the Accurate Arms 2015. All right, that's, uh, boom, 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 let's see, uh, wherever it is, okay, that's number 34 on this chart, on, th on this chart, now, you know, you, you can go to the Accurate Arms website and you you might find that the the chart is a little different, okay? Uh, you know, your burn rate numbers because they're positioned different. Don't get too hung up on that. But, um, so anyway, uh, you have, uh, um, you know, Accurate Arms 2015, number, uh, what did I just say, 34, Vargan. Everybody knows what Vargan is. That's 42. That's a big difference, isn't it? Much slower burning rate. Well, 
So now what we're talking about is this pressure right here, um, 31,713, um, you know, it, it's going to, it's going to depend, um, you know, the compression strength of, of this bullet, um, will depend, you know, greatly on how long that bullet is exposed to that amount of pressure. <laughs> okay. Let's just say that that's the end all number. Uh, the the compression strength. If you go over or if you hit it, it'll explode, right? Um, but the truth is, um, you know, the 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 speed of the powder, and that's why we work up loads, because you can't determine with one piece of information or another how to work, how to load a, a particular round, and that's why people are reluctant to give it to you. Um, well because there's so many different factors well and this is where we go full circle back to do you need a lead hardness tester because um, as useful as it is if you're still working up your loads and let's say you're you're going to take this uh, 223 round that you know what the what the compression strength of your bullet is and you're going to try to push it to that compression strength, well, you're going to need to, uh, before you can do that, you're going to need to work that load up. So let's say you take that Accurate Arms 2015 and you go 10% or in some, you may have to go back further and go 15% back and start working up from there from the minimum load. And here's the, here's the good part. The good, the good news is you don't all some of the information that I'm given here it's not necessary so don't just say I'm gonna pull my hair out I can't remember all this and there's no way I'll know all that I'll have to read for you know a year straight before I understand anything you're saying um, well it, you know that that's true and um, um, it, it's simple as simplified as I made it it's still true to try to remember all of these facts and and especially when these facts aren't facts without um, other pieces of information that goes with it. Um, that's not known because I don't know what you're loading. Exactly. So, um, full circle, do you need a lead hardness tester? Because ultimately, what you're going to do is you're going to take that bullet and you're going to start, that's why if you start 10 back, 10% 10 or 15% back from the minimum and and uh, you fire that load and as your group tightens up all right as that group tightens up to an acceptable level let's say you're at one inch groups at 50 yards and that's not good enough for you I understand that it's like man at 50 yards I ought to have half inch group or quarter inch group or something um, you might say you know uh, uh, an inch group at 100 yards isn't good enough and then as you incrementally work that load up, what you'll find is it'll either improve or it will, uh, you'll end up, you know, expanding your group. Well, at that point, usually, in, in most cases, in, in some cases, uh, that's, that might indicate that, that you have reached the compression strength of your bullet. Now you didn't know that going in, you know, scientifically I'm going to reach the compression strength of my bullet and then, no. You reach the compression strength of your bullet, so now what you need to do is you need to back off a little bit and maybe that half inch or that, that inch at 100 yards or that inch at, a, at 50 yards, that might be the best you're going to get from the bullet with the powder that you're using out of the rifle you're shooting it from. So... Um, I'm, I'm, I'm really hoping that this is the kind of information and this is frustrating to all of us because we want, oh, why can't we shoot, you know, quarter inch groups, you know, at 150 yards and, and uh, you know, call it a day. Well, you can, but you're going to have to uh, get smart and you're going to have to use, try different powders with different bullets. You can try, you can stay with one bullet and try different powders, you know, if you're part of a shooting club or something like that, you got some buddies reloading, 
you know get everybody together to make different loads and and go out and shoot that way and that that's helpful um but shoot smart don't make no stupid stuff stay within your data and you'll be okay you know worst case scenario you're shooting one of these uh one of these powder coated two two three rounds and you know you end up with leading all over your muzzle brake it's not a big deal clean it up bring that thing back a little bit you're going trying to go too hard with it um or something's wrong um you know i'm just guessing here but um but that's the thing okay so now you know what you can do with some of the information that you can get with a lee uh, hardness tester or any hardness tester uh Brunel hardness tester but you don't have to have one because if you're working your loads up to begin with really doesn't matter anyway does it you can just kind of skip that whole process but um for inquiring minds like mine you know um i i, I love the product i think it's a, i think it's a i think it's a great design i'm able to use it very easily um and uh and now if you're mixing leads trying to come up with a with a with a certain mix you know as you're uh as you're casting bullets um that kind of thing it could be helpful so i'm just going to let your imagination run wild here and you can decide whether you, you need one or not uh, i think they're helpful i think they're well built i think they're uh um you know as far as you know uh as far as being able to replicate um i think it works fine i think it's uh close enough to say um you know it's a repeatable number and you can do two or three or four at a time and you can measure those and average them out um but anyway youtube i hope this was helpful for you um uh, this video has proven to be, you know, uh, you know, at first I was just going to do just a quick review and on lead hardness tester and I can't do it without giving some kind of information to go with it on what you're going to do with the information that you get. So anyway, YouTube, thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video.